We're going to talk tonight about a natural beehive. What is a natural beehive? Um, any ideas? What is a natural beehive? A hollow it, tree. Uh, a hollow tree. Yep, I uh, I agree. Some uh, some kind of a void in a tree. All right. Could it be anywhere else? I do a lot of cutouts. That's like my main thing. In between the trees. But I would you say natural tree, but also in a structure or other um, thing, birdhouse, mailbox, barbecue grill, anything like that that might be a cavity for the bees to live in. Main thing being that they are, they're not influenced by man in any way. Now, I started off thinking, well, not influenced, not, not in any man-made structure, but they're in a lot of man-made structures. So I'm saying not influenced by man in any way. It doesn't have their uh, man's intentions put upon them. So what's, um, I'll let you know who I am. I'm, I'm Bill Kaufman. I've been doing cutouts for, for uh, about four or five years now and been full-time beekeeping for about four or five years. I've been keeping bees for, this is going to be my 16th season. Uh, I got my master beekeeper certificate through Cornell, which we've been discussing that on a couple of the forums. There are people who do not have a master beekeeper certificate that will run circles around me with less, with less years in. And then there's people with beekeeping certificates, master beekeeper certificates that just screw up on a daily basis. So that doesn't mean much, <laughs> except I've been studying for this. Uh, I've been studying these natural hives exclusively for four years. So I'm from New York. I know there's a lot of out-of-town people up here. So we're in New York up here in the uh, north, uh, northeastern quadrant of the uh, United States. And there I am, dead center, central New York. That's why it's central New York beekeepers. And <clears throat> I will actually travel about a three-hour three radius to do these things. I'll go about it. You know, anywhere I can within a day's amount of time. Nobody's paid me paid me for a hotel room to, to do a cutout or a, a rescue or anything like that yet. But I'm open. I will do it. <clears throat> um, this is the view we get typically out on the uh, in New York. There's hills, there's trees, there's swamp. Uh, it's part of the Adirondacks. I go out to the Finger Lakes. There's gorges. It's just it's just a beautiful place, except for you know the taxes. So no hurricanes. We got snow up here though. We got snow to deal with. We got winters. We got to get our bees overwintered. <clears throat> this is going to be uh, the Central New York Beekeeper School. I went out today. A little update. Went out today. Uh, did a closing on a piece of land that this is going to go on. Uh, tomorrow I got the uh, meeting with, uh, what do I got a meeting with? Civil engineer set set up the uh, subdivision and uh, the lot arrangement and whatever he does. So it'll be good. You can find us at, right here at CNY Beekeeper School. There's uh, all the events and everything else can be found there such as this tonight. Um, what is a natural beehive? We already kind of talked about that a little bit. It is a hive that is found in a tree, it is found in a home, it is found in another structure where the bees have found a cavity and deemed it worthy to live in. We can trick them a little bit with swarm traps. Say, hey, this looks like a good piece of real estate for you. Check this out, live here, and then we're going to swipe them and and throw them into, into, a, into a regular a regular hive. Or maybe a, a war a hive or a top bar of another sort. Um, they got a few others out there now. We're going to talk about uh, this one tonight. 
did some modifications to this Langstroth, and what I believe will help make the bees feel more natural in it and be able to build more naturally in it. There's a few things that we're going to talk about that that uh, you'll see in this. With a natural hive, there's there's different aspects of it. There's a lot of things to look at. There's comb, there's there's location. Location, uh, we've got, you know, differing heights. You know, we know natural hives, if we go out to a tree, it's going to be way up there. Our hives, they're rarely over a foot or so off the ground. Um, comb. Comb structure is completely different. Obviously, in a, in a box, they're going to be rectangular. It's going to be square. They're going to fit inside of a frame. They're going to fit inside of that box. They're going to be trapezoidal, so they fit inside of a a, uh, a long top bar hive. In a natural hive, it's just not the case. Basically, because of the cavity. It's just not the same. It's more organic. Definitely organic inside of a uh, inside of a tree. Inside of a tree, it can go straight up and down. It can be in a branch that goes sideways. The tree can, you know, it can turn a little bit, and those combs are just going to take the shape of that. I don't know if I got a picture in here, but I did a uh, a cutout inside of an old home where they didn't have any sheathing on the wall before they put the insula or before they put the the clapboard on, the siding. So it looked like it kind of zigzagged with the shape of the the siding on the outside. It was really cool. So here's a natural hive. It said location. This tree, that height is right about there is where the, the entrance to the hive is. You can see that it's cracked all the way down. Um, I was looking at this tree, I think it was two trees that grew together. Because if you go to the back side of this, it's got the same same features in the back. It's got um, a crack on the other side, and it's got like kind of a big branch that comes off the back. So I'm thinking it was two trees that grew next to each other, and then just the, the center of them kind of hollowed out, and that's how the bees found it. The, the homeowner, they said they've been there for as long as they can remember. And then they decided to kind of put a garden shed, like right over here on this side. And because the garden shed is there now, now they go to the, the shed and the uh, the bees kind of bother them a little bit. So they're like, well, let's get them out of here. But but they're still there. I looked at this tree like two years ago, maybe going on three years ago. And as far as I know, that's still there. So they're not bothering them en enough. Anyway, this sits on a peninsula. And if you look at the base of this tree, if I was to stand up at the base of this tree, uh, the ground slopes down almost straight down and, and about to about four feet where it kind of levels out. So we've got about eight foot of tree and another four foot. So we're about 12 feet up to that entrance right there. And here's the entrance. So we've got pointing at my screen, I should be pointing over here. You can see all this red. All this red here. It kind of looks like the tree is bleeding a little bit. Something's going on. That's propolis. That's what the bees are putting in there. They'll coat the surface of the outside of this constantly, filling it up. Uh, every natural hive I've seen, there is an amazing layer. Well, all the natural hives have been there for a few years. The longer they've been there, the thicker this layer of propolis is around the entrance of the hive. When they go in, they travel across this. Their feet touch it. Everything their feet was there were on out in the field kind of get cleaned up by this. There's a lot of studies that show that the more propolis there is in a hive, uh, the less they have to use their, their natural antibodies, unless they have to work to fight off diseases. Because this helps eliminate some of that. 
Here's a video of, a, of an entrance of a hive. This is not the same tree, this is a different one. This shows something unique about most of these hives out there. You see any comb in there? You really can't. And it repeats there. And again, they've got the, the propolis all around the entrance there. I think I keep standing in front of the screen too that I got over here. The uh, practicing to be a weatherman in front of this green thing. And a green screen back there. So they uh, all the propolis around that, that entrance and the depth. There's no comb there. They've got to go with, they've got to journey a little bit through all this propolis, through its funnel before they get to the comb. And you can see the bees are coming in at the top with uh, nectar and pollen, and they're running out the bottom and the side over here. And they've got this traffic pattern that goes on. It's, it's really cool. I mean, it's just amazing how many of them have developed and, and set up the traffic patterns. Here's a tree. This one was uh, downtown Syracuse. Not so much downtown because you can't see the buildings in it. This is more of the residential downtown in Syracuse. The, uh, maybe the uh, outside skirts. This is, uh, anybody's familiar with it, this is Syracuse Soapworks right here. And this is their tree. This, I believe, was a black walnut that uh, was dropping. It was slowly dying. It was hollow in the middle, obviously, because I wouldn't be there if there wasn't bees in there. And it was uh, dropping branches in the parking lot, so they had to take it out. But they didn't. They, you know, they're they're uh, they're naturalists, I guess. They 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 make natural soap and other products and things. So they just wanted to save the bees, and that was great. So they they got me out there and started cutting the tree down, roped some of the sections off. Let me let me point out though. Let's see, right about there was the entrance to the hive. There's a little knot that sticks out to the side. Uh, this was the best tree I've ever picked up, mostly because they had this awesome grapple thing that, that came down and, and picked up the tree. They, they grabbed it, and they put a little pressure on it. They cut it off, and they moved it right over and set it on my truck. So it remained upright the whole time. Most most tree guys rope, rope the branches down, rope the trees down, so it ends up swinging or hitting things and dropping and you know mangling some of the comb that's inside of these things but this one remained intact the whole way home usually people i get i get people tailgating me on the highway nobody tailgated me with this thing my truck was you know it was it was heavy for that truck here it is sitting in my yard and, and uh i put some insulation on the top which is another uh feature of bees and trees there's a lot that talks about well uh, we've got wood hives here they've got wood hives there what's the difference you know maybe the thickness of the wood for insulation not really a big deal you can just add a little bit on the outside we get the same insulation but there's something missing in that tree in that hive that's sitting there it's the rest of the tree that goes all the way up Sure, we might have three inches of wood on the side, uh, three inches thicker than our Langstroth hive or more, which might add like maybe goes from an R5 or R.5 to R3, but that, uh, that amount of wood that's on top and that solar mass, that solar gain, that uh, heat sink, that all that that just holds all that. There's a lot of mass of tree above that. There's a lot of mass of tree below it, too. That holds the heat, the humidity, changes different things within the hive that is not done in Langstroth. There's a video of, the, of that. Cornell was actually out. And you might see the same picture on some of their sites. Another different tree here. This is uh, 
This is cut by a chainsaw, so it's nice and smooth and straight. You can see the old comb in it. You can look how dark that is. If anybody's got dark comb like that in their hive, somebody's going to come along and say, what's wrong with you? Kick you to the back of the head and say, hey, you got you to gotta call out that old comb. Something that is important, something that we've learned that uh, needs to be done in a hive, something that happens in a, in a uh, natural hive, is this old comb will get called out. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's another shot. You can see the thickness of the wood on either side. I think this is even another tree. I don't think that's the same one. <clears throat> and below that, sitting down here is the, uh, you can see the mesh. Mesh is incorporated in the, into my hive a little bit here. <clears throat> another tree. This one's obviously cut in half. This one, you can see there's some unique things about these trees. We've got a, uh, it, it wides off here and here. Obviously, this is a branch that goes up. Another branch that goes this way. This looks like more of a trunk that goes this way. And this is a branch that goes that way. And then you can see it kind of gets thinner on either side here. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, here and over here, there's kind of a line that goes across and this was the bottom of the hive this is where the this is where the the comb stopped and you can see it over here where it stopped and then below that there was a bunch of junk and i've actually got it right here there was all this stuff in there and if you if we could look close there's bee bodies in there there's wings, there's other things in here. There's pieces of wood, propolis, and pieces of wax. There's, uh, I think that was part of a moth or something. Yeah, look at that. There's actually uh, wax, wax moth in there. Silk from the wax moth. <clears throat> but there's always a, this junk that's at the bottom of these hives. Something we don't have. We're always saying, especially this time of year in the winter, what do we do? We got dead bees in the bottom of our hive. Is it clogging up the entrance? Should I clean those out? Does it create some kind of a uh, trap for moisture? Does it create insulation in the hive? Do the bees put the dead bees there on purpose? The answer is usually... Well, since the entrance is on the bottom of our hive, what we need to do is we need to scrape out those dead bees, make sure if there's at least two or three inches of entrance that the bees can find and get out if they need to. And as beekeepers, that is something we need to do. We don't want the bees to get trapped in there. We don't want the moisture to become overwhelming. <clears throat> in a tree like this, they don't really have to worry about the moisture. Here it is, here it is cleaning out. You can see a little bit more of this line on the bottom where it was propolized because all that junk on the bottom they actually propolized over that junk. And there'll be layers of it in there. Over time, layers build up and you can see how it uh, has developed and the different things that have happened to the hive over the years. Up here, you can see more of the propolis. Right about there, there's a dark spot. That dark spot is the wood itself. The propolis came off, came loose right there. And you can see that there's the wood itself. So the rest of it is all propolis. It's amazing the amount of propolis that is put into a natural hive. <coughs> Here's another tree. This one you can see is not a straight tree. It comes up at a severe angle. And it was rotten right through here. And a windstorm came in and snapped off the end of the branch because it just rotted out in the middle here so much that it just could not take the weight of, of that branch. So I had to go there and, and take the bees out so they could finish taking the tree down. And in this, oh, I get close up. There you go. In this, you can kind of see all the junk in the bottom here. This is all 
all, all that dirt, old bee bodies, old pieces of wax, all the old stuff that lives in there. Because it's not just bees that live in this hive. They're not just bees that live in a natural hive. There's all sorts of other things. There's things that we want to keep out of our hives, like uh, small hive beetle and the varroa and the uh, the wax moss. Uh, there's other things in there that you can find, like spiders and beetles. And uh, another uh, favorite of many people is the, uh, the pseudoscorpion, the ones they say that eat the mites. And they have a place to live. They've got an environment. They've got food. They've got all these dead bees, all this other stuff, and all this junk that has fallen from the hive that, that is there for them to, to survive off of. Here's an entrance of a hive. At first, they had comb built there. And if you pick this stuff up, this is like, this is hard as a rock. This is amazing stuff right here. This is all waxed comb that was once probably full of honey or maybe not. Who knows? They built the comb and then they built it further into the tree. And because this was the entrance, they just laid down the propolis. They just kept laying it down and laying it down and laying it down until it basically filled all that comb. I mean, they're just, they're just industrious with this stuff. This here is another shot <clears throat> from another hive. <clears throat> swarm obviously the bees have to reproduce obviously they've got to start somewhere this is where beekeepers interfere they say wow look at that swarm I'm taking that home with me and it's great. I love free bees. I'll take swarms home with me all day. Sometimes they just don't find the right spot, though. If you look at the top of this tree, or tree, yeah, they probably think it's a tree. There's a house right there, and there's a dark spot right up there. There they are. This is this is just down the street from me. Uh, the people, the uh, the owners of the place. They didn't want to take him down. I'll leave it there. It'll be fine. Okay. I wonder if they survived. If you look at this edge of this comb where, where they brought it in and squeezed in, I wonder if they're actually making a cavity that they can survive in inside of this thing. Because we all know wind is not good. Everybody's always talking about wind breaks. We want a wind break on this thing. This happens here because they can't find a place. They don't know where uh, they they they've they swarmed from their original colony. They landed here to rest, and then they send bees off. You, you can ask uh, the the, uh, the Tom Seeley, the Honey Bee Democracy. Let's go find a place. This guy went or this, or this girl went to find a place. This girl went to find that place, and eventually. They couldn't make up their minds. Maybe they found a couple of great spots. Maybe they couldn't find spots at all. And then, because they took so long to make up their mind, they're going to sit there. The bees are going to lay down comb. They're going to lay down wax. They're going to build the comb up. And eventually, what's going to happen is the queen's going to lay. And then, once they've got brood, they're not leaving. So, um, they gave up looking for a new place, and they, they got stuck there. Every time I drive by, I haven't been by in about a month. <coughs> but uh, really unique. Last year, let's see, 2020, there wasn't many open-air hives. 2019, there was, like a, there was a lot of unprecedented number. You get sick of hearing that word, unprecedented, but that's the truth. <coughs> Unprecedented number of open air hives in New York in uh, 2019. <clears throat> I don't know if that's because there was a lot of swarms or the bees did really well in the winter of 2018-19. I 
or what, but there was a lot of them. And there was a lot of cutouts that year, too. Here's another tree. When you're out walking, that's the kind of thing you look for is up there. It's a little knot hole. This one, I remember this tree. This one is in... Oh, now I can't remember the name of the place. The big cemetery under uh, Syracuse University or behind Syracuse University. That tree is in, the, in that place right there. And there's a knot hole. And that one's not too far up. It's about 12 foot up. There's a close-up of another one. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I got another picture. This is the only picture I think I've got that I didn't take. This is uh, a tree. This is the heartwood here. Out here is what gives the tree life. Uh, the sapwood carries the uh, the nutrients and the water and everything up the tree. This is the part we tap when we want maple syrup out of the maple trees, obviously. Uh, this part rots out. When this part rots out, it uh, gets soft first. Bacteria come into it, <clears throat> fungus other things that break down this wood and create the cavity. <clears throat> Is that not the... Oh, maybe it's coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second because my pictures are after this. Here's another tree that came down. I always seem to get calls when trees got to come down or have come down or, or whatever. This one is interesting though. If you look down here, this tree was probably about three to four feet in diameter at the base. And this is the, this is a shed that was a good 40 or maybe 70 feet from the base of that tree and just got obliterated by that, by the tree. There was no bees in the tree, but there was bees in the shed. <clears throat> and instead of trying to take the wall apart and put the bees into a hive, I took, the, I just cut the wall off and uh, put it on a little stand and brought it home. And here they are. They were there last year. They were there the year before. Maybe one day I'll take it apart and, and take the bees out of it. We'll see how they are now. Here, this one, this tree here, you can see the bees uh, around the outside here. This was another tree that came apart. Uh, that's the front. This is the knot hole on the bottom here, leaned up against the hive. These, these orient by sight, or they orient by space first, location. They come in, and then once they get close enough, they look around, and they say, okay, where's my entrance? So when I do something like this, move bees, and here's the, here's the rest of the tree back here. It looks like a pile of firewood. I cut the circle out, the knot hole, and I put it in front of the entrance. That way they come in and say, oh, yeah, I don't see my tree here, but there's the knot hole. We're going to go into the knot hole, and they go through the knot hole and into the, into the hive. Then you can see one of my stands underneath this. I got one here we're going we're gonna to pick up in a minute, <clears throat> take a look. Okay, here's more of it. Here's another tree. I think this is the knot hole here. But what I want you to notice about this, this is really dark right here. And then really light over here. If we're looking at the color of the bark. The bark itself, you know, light gray, dark gray. That's dark because it's wet. If we're out looking for these things, and I, I like to go around. Anytime I'm going for a walk in the woods, in a park, or, or in a cemetery, wherever I'm at, you know, there are trees. And I like to look for this stuff. And this is one of the indicators that there might be a hive in, in, a, uh, in a tree. Or a colony that has built a hive in a tree. Or a possibility of a cavity is that wetness. Here's another one. And it's like the tree is leaking. This is, a different, this is a different type. I think this has got some sort of like a canker on there or something. I'm not a tree guy. I'm a bee guy. <laughs> but I know that something like this is going to cause a cavity within the tree. So if I see something like that, I know there's cavities being made or there already is a cavity there and possibly bees. And a lot of times we do find bees in there. Okay. 
Here's the thing about height again. When I do these cutouts and removals and whatnot, this is where I'm usually at. You saw the panorama uh, photo in the beginning there where you can see across the land. <laughs> this was a fun house. This one here is unique. It's, it's a long hive. It's a top bar, long hive, and, and it just, this was, I don't know who put this feature here, but this thing is hollow. It's, I mean, it, well, I guess you can't see it in that picture, but there it is. And there's the comb. Perfectly straight across. If there was top bars in there, you could pick them out. It's truly amazing. And, and you know, bees like this comb. They like this natural comb. Here's another one. Um, way up there. Uh, this chimney was not, you know, this the newer chimneys where they got the triple wall chimney encased in a, in a wood pillar. That's how I, you know, make sure the bees are where they are. I got a uh, flare infrared camera. And you can see at the top of the chimney uh, is where it's uh, bright white. That's where the bees are. And there they are. And this is a unique feature of most hives. In a tree, in a cavity like this, there is space. There's always this extra space underneath. And from here, you can see that it goes all the way down. There is 25 feet of empty space below this. A lot of hives that take apart are in walls, and there's so much space below the nest. And our Langstroth hives, we don't have that space. Even in our top buyer hives, we don't have that space. Here's another one. This comb here, this this was a, a densely packed hive. A lot a lot of wild hives, you know, they're in trees, so they, they've got a long uh, a column that they're in. Other ones like the like the one where you, I was on the lift a couple pictures ago and it was a long, long hive style box stuck to the side of the house. Uh they were wide, short and wide. You know, they, they've, they've got different uh, aspects. This is almost, uh, this would be triangular because the roof, this, the roof comes down like this. I don't even know if I'm going the right direction. The roof comes down like this here. And then there's a space under here. And this is all empty underneath here. And then there's a pile of junk here. And then there's a wall right here. And there I am doing the, the cutout. And you can see there's brick right here. Now, this brick wall was in addition to another part of the building on the other side of that wall. This, so the bees, to get in here, they had to travel about 18 inches or so, maybe 24 inches, to get through, come around that brick wall, and into the where their hive was. And in, it was a narrow, narrow area. I couldn't get my hand or anything else. Uh, it was not, you know, they say bees will build build comb in places bigger than bee space and put propolis in something smaller than bee space. But in this section, and I see a lot of it, is they don't build comb. They just propolize everything. They just They just lay down layers and layers of propolis. What do you see here? Bees. White comb, new white comb. Over here is old comb. Looks like somebody took a a rake to it and just kind of knocked it down. Old comb. This is very dry comb. And if you look over here in this spot, there's some spray foam. I put that there in 2019. And I cleared this whole cavity out in 2019. Looking at this, it's kind of a funny angle. This this here is a wall, <laughs> and this is the ceiling. So we're looking at the bottom of the comb right here. This is the bottom of the comb coming through. And this is in a church tower, a bell tower of a church. So anyway, I, 
I removed the bees. It was a huge, huge hive. I cleaned this out. Uh, there was the other part, the connecting part. I filled it with insulation and sealed it all up so good that the bees couldn't get in. Well, apparently the old, the the bees have been there for as long as the churchgoers have been there. And the guy that was working there, I think he was there 20 some years and the bees have always been there. But it was time to get them out because they were doing a, remod a remodeling job in 2019. So in 2020, last year, he called me up. He says, hey, the bees are back again. So I came back. I ended up just doing that for free because it was great. It, it was, I like doing bell towers. They're, they're fun to climb up into. Uh, it's usually a historic building that I get to look around in and check out the bones of. It's a lot of fun. But this here, this old dry comb brought in those bees. And we know that with our swarm traps. We use old comb to attract old or new bees. And that's what happened. They came in and they built this up probably in about a month or so. <clears throat> the question comes... Who raked all this down? Did the bees come in and knock down all the stuff they didn't want? That's not the case. Here's some comb. This is one of my hives. You can see this is uh, upside down, so they built this off the bottom of another hive because it was a hollow, empty space underneath it. And that's part of my idea is you got to have empty space underneath your hive. But you know what? The bees like to build comb in empty space. So we've got nice uh, yellow comb down here. It's yellow because they've been bringing pollen in and walking on it and everything else. Over here, it's nice and clean. Over here, we know this as brood comb. This is where the, the brood nest is, where the queen lays her eggs, where they raise their young, and the cocoons are left behind when the, when the, the adult bees emerge from the cells, giving it this black color. And with that, you can really judge the age of a hive by the darkness, by the thickness of the comb. After a while, the wax, it just isn't, isn't soft and pliable. Like if you take some cut comb honey, it is so soft and subtle, you can just, it melts in your mouth. Years of brood laying and comb kind of squeezes out the wax. The wax comes together and it just, it binds together almost like plastic. You can almost, good old comb like we saw in the tree in the beginning of this uh, slideshow, you can almost drive a truck over and it stay the way it is. Which is when trees fall down, sometimes nothing gets hurt at all because of that old comb is so, so strong. Here's another picture where, get out of the way here, another picture of where I left space in underneath the hive. And they built it straight across, just like I wanted them to. Mostly because I had it oriented right. They like to build along magnetic field lines in, in the planet. And you can line up a hive with your compass. There's a lot of things that say, let's... Uh, Let's put the entrance towards the south or southeast so the sun rises and shines into the hive and wakes them up early so they can come out and go to the flowers. It works pretty good because our uh, frames are almost aligned there. But the bees really want to align their comb with the, with, with the, uh, with the compass. Another thing about this picture we got to look at, look at all the bees down here. Why are there no bees up here? I know why. Because this has wax foundation with wires in it. They built their own comb down here. They want to live on that stuff. They want natural comb. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, we it, we've got to work hard to put them on plastic. We want plastic in our hives because it's durable, because it works great in an extractor, because we can scrape it off and reuse it. They don't like that. We know that. We know we don't like uh, plastic frames, so we use wood frames, and then we use wax foundation. 
uh, wires are in it, so it works a little better. That wax foundation, if they don't have wires or wig wires, where does that wax come from? Whose hives does that come from? <clears throat> How many pesticides and different things has it been uh, absorbed into it and recycled and reused? <coughs> Excuse me. So they're down here on their own comb, and this is where they want to be. So it's another aspect about uh, doing something with the with the uh, Langstroth hive. Over here is a cutout. This is a wall. So this is north. This is top and bottom. It's not a trick shot like the like the floor and the other one. What we can see here, <clears throat> dark comb, light comb, dark comb, and down here more white comb. Queen doesn't operate like that. We know that. The queen likes to stay in her brood nest. She'll start out small and kind of gradually go out. And then once she gets out far enough, the inside bees are hatching, so she'll come back in and start laying in the middle again and just keep that. So why do we have light comb here? As I said earlier about the, the colors, you can tell the difference or tell the age of a hive, almost like counting the rings of a tree. <clears throat> so we've got dark, light, dark, light. Now, I don't remember, I can figure it out better when I'm looking at how old a, a hive is, but would be, this is evidence of there was a hive here, there was a colony in this hive, there was a colony that built all this up. And that's probably about four foot tall by about 20 inches wide and the width of a wall, four inches, four and a half inches. They built all this up. Then something happened, an event took place. Maybe the queen, they swarmed, and the new queen didn't uh, come back. She couldn't find her way back, so they, they uh, the colony died. Or maybe they got overrun by mites or some other thing, some other virus, and they, and they just, you know, they perished. And so the colony, the, the hive itself, the cavity was left unguarded. So in comes wax moths. They start chewing away at this part of the comb right here. So you can see where this old comb was left. And what happened was new bees came in, kicked out the wax moths before they could eat through everything, and they rebuilt. They rebuilt here, and then the queen started laying up here. So that's why we have a brood, brood nest here surrounded by nice clean comb where they, they store honey, and there was honey out here in this dark comb also. And this is all honey up here. This is all capped honey. Down here, they were just making more space. And again, there was emptiness underneath this cavity. It went down, it was balloon framing in this wall. So the cavity went all the way, this is the second floor, it all went all the way down to the foundation. This one here, you can see where this has been eaten out, all by and, and cleaned by. Uh, it was it was nice nice wax too. This was not an old hive. This was fresh, and they're cleaning this out. You can see down here the the lath and plaster. So this is going in from the outside. So this is the inside wall, lath and plaster. What happened here was a person was trying to sell a house, and they says, hey, we got to close. They did a final walkthrough, but they noticed the bees, and they wanted the bees out. So they called me. I knew right away the guy was lying to me. I knew exactly what happened. He knew the bees were there. He sprayed the bees. He killed the he killed the colony. And he says, "Oh yeah, come in on the final walkthrough. See, there's no bees up there. Come outside. Look, there's no bees up there. I took care of them." 
they walked into the house. They walked into this room behind this this wall, and there's honey on the floor. Why is there honey on the floor? Because the bees weren't there to guard the hive. They weren't there to condition the hive. In order to keep wax proper, <clears throat> they have a humidity and a temperature and everything else that they, they keep this hive in order to uh, <clears throat> maintain the structure of the comb. They're always working it, always cleaning it, always repairing things, always making sure it is right the way it needs to be. So this was a poison hive. Nothing I ever liked to see. He said, we just need to get rid of the bees. He already tried to do it, but we failed at it because what happened is now the robber bees are coming in. They're stealing the honey. The wax moths are there. The hive beetles are there. And we're going to look at that in this next video. So if you're squeamish, look away. This is kind of the, uh, the reality of what happens inside of a hive. If this works. Now it's uh, not working. Oh, there it goes. This is where it crashed on me last time. See if it does it again. But you can see the wax moth larvae crawling around in there. You can see the robbing bees. Uh, you probably see some, yeah. Some yellow jackets, some wasps in there. You can see all the, and this is a sideways picture. It should be upright, but this is a sideways picture. But you can see all the, the silk from the wax moths. Everything chewed out. There's slime in there from the, from the hive beetles. They were already in there. They usually hatch out first and you'd see those before you see the wax moths. Or damage, severe damage from the wax moths. And there's, I think you can see a couple wax moths. Back there, crawling around the dolls, but it's just—it's such a sad thing <clears throat> when people kill bees. And it's something that I explain to people all the time. You can't just have an exterminator come in and kill them, because this is what you're going to end up with. You're going to have a mess. You're going to have all this other stuff in your walls that you don't want. You'd rather have bees in there. The bees—they just—they just, keep such a tidy place. They keep it clean and nice. <clears throat> it's all that other stuff that, that comes in and, and, and gets rid of it. And this is, this is like a life cycle of a hive. We don't just see a life cycle of the colony. Life cycle of the colony is queen lays eggs, they get overpopulated, she, they raise a queen, and they take off, they swarm, and they do it all again. Life cycle of a hive is the bees are there, they build it up, the bees are gone, Income, the other things, and which are already there. You see them in the hives all the time. They're already there, and they just they just take over when the bees aren't keeping them in check. So this next video, <clears throat> this is wax moths after, and this is all cocoons, wax moth cocoons. They're they're burrowed into the wood. They're crawling around in there, and you can see you can see all the silk on the walls. This is between the first floor and the second floor of a house. So this is the uh, the joist, the floor joist bay. And that's sheetrock on the bottom, but there's about an inch and a half, two inches of just crap. It is just all, all the bee bodies, all the things that have fallen. They've done a great job of cleaning out the wax comb in this. You can see adults running around, crawling around back there. You can see the, the larvae crawling around. All, all life cycle, all parts of the life cycle of the wax moth are in this, this cavity here. <clears throat> you can see the silk hanging down. You can see where the, where the old comb was. This was a very large hive. You know, 14 and a half inches by 9 and a quarter by probably about 3 and a half, 4 feet deep. And then right at that wall right here, it drops down into the wall. So there's massive space in the outside wall also. So I said, you see high, uh, small hive beetles first. 
I saw these. I remember the first time I saw this, and I was just grossed out. It's just small hive beetles. They don't just crawl around in a few numbers like uh, like wax, wax moths do. They, they, they come in big clumps of, of maggots. It's it's like this. Pretty nasty. They all, they all crawl together, and they got this slime about them. It's just, it's just so gross. But these bodies, these this this slime, this all this uh, moth poop, all the silk, everything, it all ends up on the bottom of the hive. It all ends up in this 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 stuff here that uh, that comes in the bottom of a the hive. They help create that environment for all that extra stuff that likes to live that we try to prevent, but really needs to be there. Really needs to be there. We can't survive on our own. We got to have a whole food chain. Same thing inside of a hive of a, of a colony of bees. This was on a compost pile. Somebody called me up and said, "Hey, they jumped a bunch of trees here. There's bees all over it. You want to come pick it up?" So I went out there. They put it on my truck, and I brought it home. And this is typically how how I take a hive out or take bees out of a tree. <clears throat> I cut it out, cut a section out like a little door, pull it off, and get it out of there. I fast forward, try to fast forward through this, but that's when it crashes when I try to stop the videos. Give it a second. You see where I cut through. There's, you, you can almost feel it when you put the chainsaw onto a log. You can feel like when there's pressure on it, all of a sudden it's loose. So you just put the tip of the chainsaw, so it, you're not hitting the bees. You're not cutting comb. It's just it, it, there's. I mean, it's so clear the different feel from cutting wood to cutting nothing. So it's easy. You'll see me. I'll come back here. And I'll pull this door off. You can see the bees are going, they're going crazy. <clears throat> and you'll see, I'll pull it out. You can see all the junk that comes off the bottom of this hive. You can see the old comb in there. Now this hive was pretty much robbed out on the uh, on the compost pile. So there was no honey in here, but I found a bunch of queens in there. There's that dirt. All that stuff that lives in the bottom of the hive. Yeah, so there's a bunch of queen larvae in there, and I got this one to survive at least half their genetics anyway, because we got the queen. Now we're going to move into this thing. I've got one picture here, actually two pictures of this. I was out in Vermont in a uh, beekeeping thing. And they had this hive here. I said, oh, that looks like a log. That's really cool. How do they put the frames in there? You can see, again, it's it's based on, you know, the Langstroth. We've got frames, and we've got uh, a bottom entrance. It's a solid bottom board and with frames in there. They're just a little bit smaller, and they got spacers inside in the, in the corners. That is a really neat idea. It looks great. It's a fun little hive. Somebody took some time and, and made something really cool. So we talked about location. Location is uh, basically the height. We're not going to change that with this. I don't recommend anybody to trying to put a hive up 30 feet in the air. The comb, the comb is different. It's more natural, uh, more organic in a natural hive. The cavity is different. The cavity, we got to talk about not just the volume of space that the bees occupy with the volume of space that they don't occupy. Also, what is in there as far as the, the cavity, how much the, the junk that's in there, the, uh, the entrance. Where's the entrance? I don't think I mentioned the entrance on many of those things. The entrance is almost always two-thirds up the comb. It is never on the bottom, never. Uh, also, the entrance is a distance from the hive, where in our Langstroth hives, we've got the entrance on the bottom and the combs right there, the bottom of the comb. And you'll never, ever find it that way 
in, I shouldn't say never ever, <laughs> but because because I'll go out and I'll say, oh man, there it is, you know, but I haven't seen it where the, the entrance is on the bottom of the hive. It's always up, halfway up, two thirds of the way up where the where the comb is built. And it's a distance from, they've got to walk a distance through a propolis laced tunnel in order to get there. HVAC, I didn't know how else to write that. Ventilation in the hive. A lot of things are talked about ventilation in the hive. Like we said, we got to clean out all those dead bees on the bottom board so the, so the air can get up in, so the bees can get out. You've got to have a top entrance <clears throat> so the air can flow. They can get out the top if the bottom is, is, is blocked. Well, they don't have that. They've got one entrance typically. Sometimes there's a couple of them. But there's the top of a, a natural cavity is always closed in. There's there's no space. And, and I'm sure the bees choose that for a reason. Leave everything they do, they do for a reason. The biome, the, uh, the area they live in, it's a little bit different, like I said. It's got all the old stuff in there. It's got all the junk in the bottom, dead bodies, stuff that's cleaned out. They've had uh, life cycles of the hive where things have broken down and, and put in that, that deepness of, of, of dirt and things and rotting things in the bottom where, where all kinds of critters can live. I don't keep bees. We keep, a, keep an environment, keep a, a microbiome of, of things. We've got forests. We've got tundras. We've got deserts. And we've got beehives. <laughs> it's just an incredible area they develop in there. So let's go to looking at this thing here. 